Norman. Uh, today, I would like to uh, talk about the classification of cr craniosynostosis, theoretical imp imp implications. Okay, so all one in the room here knows that which suture will fuse and what kind of shape will be in craniosynostosis. So today, I will uh, focus on the single suture synostosis and classificate that and talk about the surgical implication with more cases. So scaphocephaly is an elong elongation of the skull resulting from the premature fusion of the central suture, as we all know. Uh, most common type, it, it is the most common type of uh, the synostosis, 40 to 60 percent, okay, including non-syndromic non and, and, and syndromic cases. They have a little, little male predominance, and you see uh, the skull shaped like this. You see the fused uh, central synostosis suture. And it defines well with, uh, with the cephalic index, and the cephalic index under 75, 75 is defined as scaphocephaly. So surgical indication is cosmetic correction of the skull to normalize its form. Also, what else but what we think about uh, prevention of the raised intracranial pr pressure or preservation of the cognitive development, it's still in debate. Well, however, the surgery looks fine uh, after they correct the, the shape of the skull. We go to the trinigonocephaly. It's a premature fusion of the metopic suture. Obvious ridge of the midline due to the ossification of the suture is seen. And you can easily diagnose the child when, we come, when the child comes into the R outpatient office. So they have a restriction of the lateral growth of the frontal lobe, bone, and also, interestingly, the number of this pathology is increasing. Now it's the second single suture synostosis in terms of incidence. So the indication of the surgery is to uh, obtain the normalization of the anterior skull fossa volume and, the, and to correct the abnormal position of the superior orbital ridges and hyperterrorism, which I talk later. Uh, you can see the nice formed forehead uh, before compared to the uh, before the surgery. And when we go to the plagiocephaly, plagio means that it, it's a Greek word. Uh, it's, it means as oblique or slanted. Uh, and you see the fusion of the unilateral coronal uh, synostosis. You see the flattening forehead and the deformation of the orbit and the facial bone. So what we do in surgery is to remove the frontal bone. I didn't show you, but you, we uh, remove the orbital bar, move it anteriorly. And I would like to show some of the cases which I think it is important. Uh, what do you see in this uh, picture? It's not really uh, scaphocephalic, but we see a sagittal synostosis. So we, we uh, uh, we define that sagittal, this case uh, of sagittal synostosis without scaphocephalic deformation. Uh, we compared, collected 19 cases of CI over 75 in these cases. Also compared these group with the typical scaphocephalic group. So it seems like, well, it could be obvious, but the, the non-scaphocephalic group uh, has been diagnosed later. And in some degree, they had a high incidence of uh, developmental delay. In neuroradiological analysis, uh, they had a uh, non scaphocephalic group, had parietal foramina, and you see the digital, mar digital marking in the frontal area, more than the typical ones. And we measured ICP monitoring uh, in, this, in these cases. And we see a plateau waves, which means that increased ICP was seen in 76% of our cases. So when we go back to the literature, in uh, the paper from India, about they were uh, collecting three cases, over 400 cases of, from their osteological collection. And they concluded that isolated sagittal suture absence does not result in a head configuration that is scaphocephalic. When you go to the clinics, clinical papers, uh, the Oxford group has found eight cases out of their 193 cases uh, of these uh, scaphocephaly without uh, sagittal synostosis without scaphocephalic deformation. 
they measured SCP in six cases. They found 67 percent of B waves, and they found also 62 percent of development de delay in these in their cases. So it looks similar to our cases, and they, they concluded that it is important to recognize these patients because they are at high risk of developing raised ICP. In their paper, uh, they hypothesized that the late fusion of the suture after the majority of the skull growth had taken place, uh, the metopic suture had resulted in compensatory. Also, other sutures appear normal but did not function normally, but we still don't have an answer. So in, in these cases, we concluded that cases of sagittal sutures in ostosis without scaphocephalic deformation are seen in a certain incidence. And these children tend to have a development of dele delay in some degree, detected later than normal sca scaphocephaly, and they have a, a higher incident of increased intracranial pressure. So what I want to say is that we need to uh, concentrate of increased internal cr intracranial pressure in these even if they are a single suture synostosis. And from this, uh, it is our cases that uh, it's not generally accepted. So just, you know, sit back and relax and look up, look, I, w I would like to uh, see, make you, make you see what we are doing. This case is a four-year-old old, and I understand that you don't understand in, in a Jap Japanese, but uh, he has a difficulty speaking Japanese, especially words, and he cannot communicate uh, better. In this case, he has a hyperactive, this guy is four years old, hyperactive, cannot speak a word. So after the surgery we had done, this child, the, he started to communicate better, the, the la language is getting clearer. And that hyperactive boy is starting to read cards in Japanese. So it's I, I think it's difficult to convince you, but they have a marked in, in, uh, div uh, improvement in development. So uh, what we are talking about is mild trigonocephaly with clinical symptoms, which has a language delay, hyperactivity, and sometimes autistic sim uh, symptoms. And you see a mild frontal ridge metopic ridge and also the compression in the terrian. It's not, I think it's not uh, si similar to the metopic crest that I will uh, show you later that uh, Federico Diroco had, had posted. And also you see a throne between the, uh, from the, uh, between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe, which I will show you here. You go to the surgery, uh, we do zig zigzag skin incision, remove the frontal bone. Also, you see marked digital marking uh, in, in the frontal bone. We also remove the orbital bar. And then there was, there is a throne. It's a little bit difficult to see, but there's a throne buried between the temporal lobe and the, actually in the sylvian fissure. So once we uh, put, put back the frontal bone in a floating uh, manner, we close, the, uh, we close the, the patient. And since we don't know this natural history, we uh, conducted a cohort study. We collected 23 cases, and we waited for three months before surgery and did five tests, a psychological tests, and we defined this as a natural history, and we did the uh, same test at three months post-op and six months post-op. And if we see that uh, before surgery, three months of surgery, uh, one-fourth of the patient has improved in DQ. While we, after the surgery, three months, we see eight cases improving, and also almost half the patients improving after surgery. We go to the PARS. This is a, a score system of autism. The, the, the score decrease it means that it improves. Uh, also, we have a one-fourth patient that uh, improves uh, before surgery. Also, on the other hand, we see an increase of 43% in both uh, three months and six months. And each of each of patient has uh, 70, almost, actually, oh, sorry, 
uh, that more than 70 percent has in, had some, some kind of increase in these sc scores. And we have to report about the adverse events, event that overlapped with the bone in one case. So in over 70 percent of these cases shows improvement in some degree. So that this results leads to believe, lead us to believe surgery is providing a positive e effect of this children, these children. Uh, but uh, there should be some, some kind of a functional disorder in the brain itself. So only releasing the intracranial pressure is not enough for these kids. So in conclusion, surgical implication of single suture synostosis is mainly considered as cosmetic facts, but it is still uh, in a debate. However, there might uh, some be some, some cases that increased intracranial pressure should be considered more. So this is not an issue that the plastic surgeon will consider. We neurosurgeons should be aware of uh, the issue of increased intracranial pressure. We know why we treat these, this kind of kids. Uh, so we need to think about even if they have a single suture synostosis. Thank you for your attention. And at last, I would like to invite all of you at the ISBN 2016 in Kobe, held in October. Thank you very much.